In Northern Arizona, our forests are largely arid, pine-dominated forests. The pine is primarily ponderosa pine, and ponderosa pine over evolutionary time evolved with fire. So fire was natural in this system in a low intensity, frequent condition. So fires burned really frequently every three to five to seven years. Uh, and now they burn infrequently. They burn really, really hot and they kill a lot of trees and very detrimental to the system. The mission of the Ecological Restoration Institute at Northern Arizona University is to serve diverse audiences with objective science and actionable implementation strategies for forest restoration and climate adaptation across Western landscapes. Forest management often involves managing forests for the benefit of a large population in order for them to have recreation opportunities, forest products, socioeconomic values. And so getting people to think about how treatments could restore forests as opposed to just producing traditional forest products and forest outcomes uh, was the primary focus of the Institute. Part of that also included uh, translating existing science uh, from theoretical or primary science into actionable knowledge, working with land managers in order to restore these forests and create, you know, climate resilient conditions across the West. As temperature increases by about one degree Celsius, the amount of fire activity in the western U.S. roughly doubles. So since about the 1980s, fire activity has increased something like sevenfold. Um, and about half of that is due to warming temperatures attributed to climate change. Forests also have a harder time recovering after fire as temperatures get warmer because those places are no longer suitable for the species that were there. So we've been doing a lot of research in tree planting and how to best go about doing the restoration of forests after they've burned severely in some of these ecosystems. Using satellites to track how quickly places that have been planted are recovering after they're planted. And it seems like about a 30% increase in the rate of recovery if you go out and plant trees in a burn area, relative to just kind of like the natural processes operating on their own. Incorporating Basha can help immensely in forest restoration. It can help restore a degraded or contaminated soil. It can work with the soil microbes and create a condition very good for the plant growth. It holds water for a very long period of time. And in a region like Arizona, adding biochar can help the irrigation problem a lot. These are two saplings from our experimental site. It's a forest soil that was degraded, like completely degraded by forest fire. And we planted both in last fall. This is with biochar, so happy and healthy. And this is a sad one without biochar. So like it's evident how biochar is helping the soil. In the greater Flagstaff area in 2010, we experienced a wildfire called the Schultz Fire. So following that fire, we found that over a 10 year period of time, the total costs for an, a single wildfire that was 15,000 acres in size, so relatively small, uh, considering the size of fires that we are seeing uh, currently, cost $111 million. Only 10% of that cost was associated with fire suppression. So what that means is that the rest of those economic costs associated with one single event included things like post-fire flooding mitigation, cleanup, impacts to household, disruptions to uh, personal lives. So the true cost of wildfire is much higher than the cost of restoration in advance of the fire. In short, being reactive is more expensive than being proactive. What we're working on more and more today is cross-boundary work, where we, we work with collaborative partnerships across multiple ownerships. We have federal landscapes, state-owned landscapes, county-owned landscapes, privately owned. A lot of this work was focused on wildfires and threats to our communities. Climate adaptation and the tactics to mitigate it is a very complicated topic and maybe not as easy to convey to a set of multiple stakeholders. We're examining those questions in our ecological realm as well to provide the answers and again, try to bring people together for some solutions for climate adaptation in these fire adapted forests. Tribal knowledge is very important for scaling up successful forest restoration. 
There are 22 federally recognized tribes within Arizona, many of which who manage their own forest lands and all of which who have ancestral ties to, to lands that are currently federally managed. Tribes in particular have an extensive knowledge of cultural burning. There's been a large push towards trying to understand how to get more cultural burning onto the landscape and seeking better support for tribes to be able to do something like that and to increase the use of fire across the landscape. And so I think building on tribal relationships requires consistency and persistence and also respect of their perspectives. And that's what we have been trying to do through our work here at the Ecological Restoration Institute. Just in my short time in this profession, I've seen a lot of things change, both within the culture of forest management, but also with the incorporation of forest restoration. From really an agricultural resource extraction approach to forestry and forest restoration, to a more holistic, comprehensive approach to forest management. So that holistic approach to viewing the forest as a whole, but also where we fit into it, is makes me very hopeful for the future.